In a previous video in this series, we discussed the industrial extraction of iron via a blast furnace process. We are now going to talk about another extraction process used on the most reactive metals called electrolysis. A good place to start would be by breaking down this word. So this word has two different components to it, electro and the effix lysis. Now, when, when anyone ever sees the phrase electro, you often think uh, it means electricity. And in, in, in this situation, it's correct. And the effix lysis infers the splitting of something. You may have seen it before if you've ever come across the word hydrolysis. So hydro and lysis, the splitting of something using water. Now, this process is conducted in an electrolysis cell. The two key components of the electrolysis cell are the electrodes. You have a negative electrode called the cathode and the positive electrode called the anode. Now the negative electrode has a negative charge, therefore it attracts positively charged ions. The anode being the positively charged electrode, therefore attracts the negative charged ions. The compound you conduct electrolysis on has to be what's referred to as an electrolyte. So when the compound breaks down, each substituent it was made of has to have a different charge. So one ion will be positive, the other ion will be negative. And this, of course, means that electrolytes are ionic compounds. You cannot conduct electrolysis on a solid material. They either have to be dissolved in a solution or they could be melted. The ions need to be free to move so they can move toward each electrode. And the electrodes have to be inert, meaning they cannot react with the ions in aqueous solution or the molten compounds. Common materials electrodes can be made for are unreactive metals such as platinum or graphite or carbon electrodes. As I just mentioned, the process of electrolysis is conducted on ionic compounds. These ionic compounds, of course, have a metal component and a non-metal component. Metal ions, always next to always, having a positive charge. Non-metal ions having a negative charge. And electrolysis can be conducted on salts. And as a matter of fact, any sort of ionic, ionic substance. The products of electrolysis are very easy to predict as it is the direct splitting of whatever your starting compound is. If it consists of just two different atoms, you will get them on their own, separated from each other. As I said, a metal ion next to always has a positive charge, therefore the metal product in electrolysis will always go to the cathode, the negatively charged electrode. The non-metal always having a negative charge will go towards the anode, which is the positively charged electrode. Some more examples of ionic compounds which can be separated by the process of electrolysis. You have sodium chloride as the compound. Chlorine would be seen present at the anode, chlorine gas, that is, the, uh, the diatomic gas. You could be able to tell whether or not the process was successful because there would be bubbling around the area of the positive electrode. And at the cathode, you would have sodium, pure sodium as a metal. Lead to bromide can also be uh, extracted by electrolysis. Bromine gas, of course, appearing at the anode lead being present at the cathode and with zinc chloride chlorine gas again at the anode and zinc at the cathode an important part about electrolysis is knowing what is happening at each electrode it's safe to assume that what happens at the negative electrode the cathode is different to what happens at the positive electrode or the anode this could be seen and identify through the use of half equations, which essentially describe the difference in what happens at each electrode. It, it involves the use of electrons in terms of balancing out charges, so the gain of electrons to the metal ion and the loss of electrons to the non-metal ion. This is of course the process of redux. So these half equations show oxidation and they show reduction. One example of an oxidation half equation would be the formation of diatomic gas at the anode, the positive electrode. So here we can see you have two chloride, uh, two chloride ions 
which form a diatomic chlorine gas and they have lost two electrons hence the cl2 plus 2e minus which is the denotion de of an electron an example of the reduction which would occur at the cathode the negative electrode is lead 2 plus gaining two electrons to form lead on its own the half equation on the left for chlorine i'll just summarize the half equation on the left for chlorine shows oxidation as it's losing electrons oxidation will therefore occur at the anode half equation on the right shows reduction reduction of course occurring at the cathode the main metal extracted by the process of electrolysis is in fact aluminium fun fact about aluminium is that it is the most abundant metal found in the earth's crust it's a it's a reactive metal therefore requires electrolysis because electrolysis uses a lot of energy however because of this energy requirement it is a costly process the reactivity of aluminium means that it forms relatively stable compounds as a fact it does form stable compounds therefore it requires a very large amount of electrical energy high costs it's extracted from something called alumina which is also known as aluminium oxide which is purified from something which comes from something called bauxite which is purified to then yield this aluminium oxide now bauxite bauxite is a very crude material it contains this aluminium compound along with other metal ores such as iron oxide and i believe also certain lead compounds are present but mainly know that aluminium comes from this alumina al2o3 it's dissolved in cryolite this is because cryolite has a lower melting point than aluminium oxide which helps lower some of the costs as there will be less heat energy required less temperature requirements it's dissolved in molten cryolite i should add and the electrolysis of aluminium uses graphite electrodes or carbon electrodes as they are inert and they're very unlikely to react with the molten mixture and of course redox occurs the half equations for the extraction of aluminium or alumina are as followed i take take a second to figure out which is reduction which is oxidation and there's your answer redox occurs with reduction being that of aluminium as the aluminium cation which is a positive ion gains three electrons having aluminium just on its own and the oxidation of the o2 minus anion the negative ion which comes to give diatomic oxygen plus four electrons the electrolysis of aluminium occurs in a very specific electrolysis cell it's different to the one we've seen previously as you can see that the cathode isn't submerged in the molten mixture it instead surrounds it and kind of holds it that itself is then sealed in a steel case you can see that the anode is still submerged in the mixture however and purified aluminium ore is dissolved in the molten cryolite the molten aluminium will then sink to the bottom which will eventually be tapped off as previously mentioned the reduction occurs at the negative electrode at the cathode so the reduction of aluminium occurs in the outside which then allows it to sink down to the bottom and leave the electrolysis cell the oxidation of oxygen of course occurring at the graphite anode the anode in this situation does have to be replaced sometimes because graphite is pure carbon and when oxygen reacts with carbon it can form varieties of gases so carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide which is an unwanted product but because of this reaction can take place it can wear down the graphite anode which means that they do have to be replaced unfortunately adding to the cost of this process now much like where to situate a blast furnace there are specific ways in which a site is chosen for um, an aluminium electrolysis location which is 
essentially the same as that of a blast furnace. So it needs to be near an area where you can get imports, where you can export it. It has to have a place close by where its workers can live and it needs to avoid built up areas. The only difference being that this process requires a massive amount of electricity. So it has to be in the close vicinity of a power station. So in this somewhat lengthy video, we have looked at the process of electrolysis. We looked at the half equations. We've shown that reduction occurs as well as oxidation. We've seen how to predict the products of electrolysis in terms of the anion and the cation, which is formed, how the metal is the positive ion, which is reduced. The non-metal is the negative ion, which is oxidized. We've looked at a specific example, which is the extraction of aluminium via electrolysis, its half equations, and the electrolysis cell of aluminium. Thank you very much for watching.